I'm Prissa Jean and you're watching A Taste of New York. And today we're at the restaurant Danielle in the Upper East Side and we're going to be tasting a delicious authentic bouillabaisse that will be prepared by Chef Francois. And he's using this exquisite saffron found in Afghanistan created by Rumi Spice which has been hand picked and delivered straight to us to try. So let's go in the kitchen and go check out this recipe. When you come to Daniel and you order uh, bouillabaisse as an appetizer, this is what you will get. So the plate comes out from the, from the kitchen, the fish still kind of raw, and we pour the hot soup on top and it just finished to cook table side. It's a classic uh, French dish from the French Riviera. So for France, it's basically a fish stew with uh, saffron, tomato and uh, anise. We're gonna get going with the vegetable first. So a bouillabaisse can be served just as a soup for the liquid. It can be ser served as a, as a main course dish, you know, uh, with uh, large, uh, large pieces of fish inside. So here we're gonna use some olive oil. So here we have uh, the funnel and the onion. So you see, it's a, a good amount of garlic. The tomatoes, we're just gonna remove the core and then chop it up and we're gonna go inside the recipe a little bit later on. For the sachet, so you can see there's a little bit of rosemary, thyme, parsley, bay leaves, the dry spice also as well. I like to keep the saffron separate so we can toast it with the vegetable when we get and the fish when we get to the end. So for the fish, we have all kind of little fishes, you know. The tiny ones, we don't really need to do anything to it, you know. The big ones, we're gonna chop it up in pieces. The orange peel is really, you know, it's, it gives a little like a citrus touch to the dish. But you see, you really put very little and you make sure you remove the white part so it's not bitter, you know. Now then the vegetables are pretty well sweated. We're gonna add the fish. You wanna give a nice roast to the fish. You see the fish start to cook slightly, you know. We're gonna add the saffron. The saffron, you wanna toast it a little bit so you get really the color coming out, you know. Most of the time, saffron is used with seafood, but it can be used, you know, with meat or with dessert, with ice cream. With so here we have a little bit of espalette. So it's a spice coming from the Basque country, south of France, between Spain and France. So now then everything is sweated and the, and the saffron and the espalette is inside. We're going to add the tomato and the sachet. So we're also going to use a little bit of tomato paste. And then, of course, we're going to have what everybody uses in the south of France, Pernod. It's um, an alcohol made uh, with uh, star anise, fennel seeds, you know, like it's very uneasy, you know. And it, it really like boosts the flavor, you know. And then I'm gonna add some uh, water. If you're not sure about how much water to put, usually whatever you do, you just cover pretty much what you're doing. It's better not to put too much at the beginning, but while this is simmering, I'm gonna walk you to the, to the garnish we use uh, at the restaurant. So what we have here, we have um, some potato, diced potato and a little batonet of funnel, which has been cooked. The potato is cooked just with saffron and water and a little bit of salt. So that's why it turned yellow. And then for the fish, uh, we have some gunnards. We're gonna slice the filet thinly and put it on a plate. So after we're gonna put a little bit of that oil with the saffron on it, then the aioli is gonna go. Because it's always good to mix the aioli uh, inside the, the soup, you know. You can do a rouille also, which is, a, the color is a little bit different. So over here, you know, um, the uh, saffron poached potato and the confit funnel, we just warm up in the, some of the bouillabaisse. What we're gonna do here, it's a play for the waiter, you know, and we're gonna put the fish in a plate, and the waiter is gonna put the hot soup, and he's gonna uh, cook the fish in front of the customer who's gonna cook at the last second, you know? Basil oil, then we're gonna add the toast, some garlic chips as well, the dry olives. So this, this uh, particular bouillabaisse is served as an appetizer, so it's really, uh, you know, like a small quantity of liquid, you know? We remove the sachet because this doesn't get, you know, pressed, and then we're gonna pass the soup. A uh, fine screen uh, food meal is perfect for that. Uh, on this part, it's very important to, to press a lot. You wanna extract every single little bit of flavor out of the bone, the vegetable. So over here, you just go two times uh, the right way and go back. 
you can do the bouillabaisse with a single fish as well you know if you just have gunner you can just use gunner you know with the same ingredient you can see yeah, that's when you stop pressing when the leftover mix is pretty dry you know that's when you get all the uh, flavors out and this is the finished bouillabaisse so yeah we can add a little bit of spice and a touch of pernod we can add a little bit of saffron also and let it you know simmer together that's it so you know when you when you taste the bouillabaisse you know you, you really taste you know of course the fish is the, the main flavor but what you taste you know is, is funnel and saffron you know that's really the main ingredients in a bouillabaisse in each recipe it's always uh, important to get the best product you can find uh, and for the bouillabaisse you know the saffron is one of the key success of making the, the dish perfect you know we use saffron in many different preparations over the years, you know. It could be used in different dishes in the same time. Uh, right now it's in the bouillabaisse. Sometimes we use it in the dessert, in the pastry cream, in mussel uh, sauce, you know. To, you know, uh, saffron goes very well with shellfish uh, and seafood in general and with something, you know, briny, you know. We do use it a lot in sauces most of the time, you know. For more information on Rumi Spice and saffron, visit rumispice.com. I love saffron because it just adds that extra flavor to a dish that you can't get anywhere else. And it's not like an immediate flavor, it's a very subtle flavor. But you can't have paella without saffron. You can't have risotto milanese without saffron. Rumi Spice is a social enterprise. We import saffron from rural Afghan farmers to the international marketplace. And Afghanistan happens to grow some of the world's best saffron. Rumi Spice was founded by a group of veterans who have all served in Afghanistan. We really believe that the way to a sustainable future for Afghanistan is through economic empowerment of the Afghan people. Afghanistan is now rife with an opium problem. Saffron is the best way for Afghan farmers to help avoid the problem of poppy and opium and the influence that the Taliban has on these farmers. I spent four years in the Marine Corps. I was an infantryman. I spent uh, the fall of 2010 and spring of 2011 in Helmand Province, Afghanistan. When we got to Afghanistan in September, the only thing growing at the time was marijuana. It kind of went hand in hand with why they grow opium in Afghanistan. They're all farmers. That's how they make their living and opium and marijuana are two of the most lucrative cash crops for them. The problem is most of that money goes to the Taliban, not to the farmers themselves. Our job was to try to convince them to grow something else, but a lot of the farmers just weren't interested. Wheat wasn't gonna make them any money, opium would, and so would marijuana. And that was, uh, that was the biggest thing, was money for them. So saffron actually gives farmers up to six times more income than growing poppy for opium. And so it's a viable alternative for an income source for farmers and their families. We source directly from these farmers who we know. We know every single one of them. We know their families, we know where they live. And it's because we have people on the ground who work with the farmers on a daily basis. We've only been in operation for about a year, but Rumi Spice, because of what we've sold so far has now doubled the production of saffron from our farmers. So they're actually planning on growing twice as much saffron than they did this past year. And that's amazing, in just one year. Afghanistan is worth investing in. And if we truly want Afghanistan to succeed in the long term, we're gonna to have to empower these Afghan farmers. And I truly believe that they're the key to peace and prosperity for Afghanistan.